one of the big things that allows us to have the financial freedom that we do is that we purchased a house that was well within our price range and well within our affordability to make repayments. Now because of this, there were one or two things we needed to compromise a little bit on and we needed to purchase a slightly older house and we're also in a country town and generally houses are cheaper in country towns. I personally prefer living in a more rural area but for some people that would be quite a sacrifice. But you know when you buy a house you've got your list of things that are like absolutely essential and it's like we will not compromise on these things. Well for me one of those things was the kitchen. However we found a house that pretty much ticked all the other boxes and was very very affordable but the kitchen was terrible. I will put up some photos of it. It was impractical, it was small. I have small children running around so knowing where they are and being able to see them is quite handy for me and I spend a lot of time in the kitchen as a lot of mums do, especially me being someone who really likes to make food from scratch and I love doing baking and stuff with the kids. But when they're running around the house and stuff, it's helpful for me to be able to see them and know where they are, whereas the kitchen was all enclosed and there was no way I was going to be able to keep an eye on them when they were in the lounge room playing with toys. Um, and as at the time I had two very small children, this was an important thing for me. And I love to have people over as well, so hospitality is very important to me. So having a good kitchen was really at the top of my priority list. However, I looked at the layout of the house and I knew that we could knock down the hallway, open up one of the walls, and we could really improve the kitchen. So I jumped on a Facebook page that sold secondhand kitchens. And so I was looking through for the perfect kitchen for me and what I found I was so happy with. One of the reasons being that it came with all the appliances. So there was a double oven. It also came with a dishwasher, that's always a win, a double sink, I love having a double sink, and the biggest selling point for me was real granite bench tops. So then it's not the fake granite, it is real granite. And then it's got heaps of cupboard and pantry space. So we managed to do a really cheap kitchen renovation and now I have an amazing kitchen. I'll take you through how we managed to get that to happen for cheap and we were still able to purchase a house for quite cheap and probably one of the reasons it was so cheap was because the kitchen was terrible. And just for a few thousand dollars we've managed to improve that and it also greatly improves the value of the house so we're really winning everywhere. So the cost of this kitchen I think was about three and a half thousand. Now looking at the appliances alone particularly considering it's a very good oven and that included the stove top and the dishwasher, um, you would be getting pretty close to that just buying those appliances. The fact that it had real granite bench tops, that's probably about $3,000 there as well. So um, when I looked at it, I was like, I'm getting a really good deal. And for a kitchen, $3,500 is pretty good either way. Obviously it's all secondhand stuff. Everything looked to be in really good condition. A couple of cupboards might have had like dints or scratches, but nothing really dramatic. And they're gonna get dints and scratches anyway, so it didn't bother me and it probably saved me about $15,000. This kitchen was coming from Sydney. It was already pulled out of the house. So we managed to get it delivered for $800. So now we're, you know, above $4,000 for our kitchen renovation. Not too bad. Anyone who's renovated a kitchen knows how expensive they can be. And like I said, I was wanting to get a good one and we got the house quite cheap. So we did have a little bit of money left over that we could do this renovation. So the next big thing that saved us money and oh, we are so grateful. We have a friend who is a builder. And so he did the work for us. We did pay him, but he did it for mates rates. And that saved us a lot of money and he did a fantastic job. So you know who you are, thank you. It can be a bit tricky to get a builder who will be willing to put in a secondhand kitchen because there are a few like logistical issues with fitting things in, in the space that you've got. And quite often things don't line up quite as well because it's been previously installed in a different kitchen. So if you are looking into 
doing a secondhand kitchen, just make sure you have a builder who is willing to go to the extra effort of fitting a secondhand kitchen. But even if it means that you need to pay them a little bit more um, and maybe it will take them a little bit of extra time, often what you're saving on everything else will be well worth it. Now we actually had more come in for the kitchen than we needed so we just used what we needed and then we used the other stuff just for other things so um, we, when we took out the hallway it unfortunately meant taking out the linen cupboard so in the laundry we sort of redid that a little bit and some of the spare kitchen cupboards we used as a bit of like a linen cupboard space. Me and my husband did the demolition work mostly ourselves um, because you don't really need to know much about building to know how to rip out a cupboard and some walls and stuff so we didn't really need to get our builder to do that side of things so that saved a little bit of time and money and effort on his part. We were hoping to use the original floorboards. Um, when we ripped everything up we weren't quite sure what we were going to find underneath um, and unfortunately there were a few surprises that meant that, yeah, we couldn't just sand the original flooring and, you know, try to make it look okay. So we just got some vinyl flooring that you can stick down. That my husband did himself, which says that it is really quite easy to do yourself because he is amazing, but he is not a builder and he'd never done anything like that before. And the job he did isn't perfect, but it's fine. So let me take you through my absolutely wonderful kitchen. So yeah, we've got these granite bench tops, which oh, I just love so much. So I can put hot stuff straight out of the oven on that um, and it's fine. It's really hardy. It doesn't scratch like it's fantastic. Um, but yes, very expensive. <laughs> so this island bench did not come with the kitchen, but obviously like when we took out the hallway so you can sort of see there's the door so where the hallway would have come to so all this bit is extra kitchen that we were able to add in so that little bit there was the original kitchen and so because I had so much room in the middle I'm like an island bench top will be fantastic because let's face it you can really never have too much bench space and especially when I'm serving up dinner for six people it certainly helps to have all that room so ideally I would have liked that to be granite as well but to get a bit of granite that size is very very expensive. So we just went with um, this one I think it was it was from somewhere like Bunnings and it was like a hundred bucks and my husband just polished it and shined it up all nice and that's some of the cupboards from the kitchen that he just kind of put together and so that's a nice our nice little island bench for not very much at all lots of cupboards and because we've got quite high ceilings it means it's, I've got all my storage space up there as well in addition to all these wonderful cupboards that's not the original dishwasher uh, unfortunately the dishwasher blew up but it had a few good years in it um, my lovely double sink um, that's the pantry that it came with it didn't come with the fridge this is my wonderful, amazing double oven that just oh, works so well. Love it so much. The hot plates came with it. I would have preferred gas, but you know, that is what it had, so that's fine. The range hood and all that. I got those tiles from the rubbish tip shop for almost nothing. I might have been like $5. So that works as our splashback. I was considering getting a proper splashback, but it was quite expensive, so I didn't end up doing that. Yeah, and this is the flooring that my husband put in, and I think he did a great job. So, like I said, it was new to him, and he didn't know what he was doing, and so some of these gaps here are a little bit big, but if he was to do it again, you know, he would know how to fix that, and again, like, it's really fine. <laughs> Yeah, just new plaster, coat of paint. So that is my kitchen. Unfortunately, I can't tell you exactly how much the renovation cost. Um, I really wish I could, it was years ago. But it would have come in around $10,000. So that's with all the appliances, with the building work, which again, a friend did for us. So that made it significantly cheaper. And we did what we could ourselves. 
So hopefully this has given you a few ideas of if you're wanting to do a similar renovation. However, my one bit of advice with renovating would be always overestimate how much money you will need because there's always surprises that happen when you're doing stuff or you just forget about certain things that you needed to do or bits and pieces that you needed to get or sometimes things just take longer than you're anticipating. So always make sure you've got more money there than what you need and if you've got some left over, hooray, you can use it for something else. Oh, and a note on the oven, um, obviously being secondhand, it didn't come with a user's manual. I was able to just Google the oven that it was um, and find an online manual for it. So if you're buying secondhand, manuals often are still really necessary. You can quite often get manuals for them online. I hope this has been helpful to you.